Good morning, banana maters, and good morning, onion skin. This is something I've meant to do since me and onion skin did the critique of his splash, which was really fun. And I'm waiting for him to finish a new splash so we can talk about all the things he's learned. But in the meantime, I want to talk a little bit about how you can learn how to do splashes easier by breaking it down into simple structures and then you can add the fanciness on top. So the very first thing you should start doing, if you haven't done it already, is start organic drawing. Just drawing shapes and forms from nature, like logs and trees, any old thing that you find lying around, even just things in your house. Drop a cloth on the floor, draw that, old boots, old bags. That's all super valuable for teaching you how to draw curved stuff in perspective. Okay, so we've all got that linear perspective everywhere that people are talking about. Very, this, this means nothing. This is just lines. There's a whole another side of perspective, which is a little bit more intuitive, which is getting those curves. So the old Scott Robertson gnomish DVDs, like the Gnome Workshop. Anyway, Scott Robertson has some really good things about starting with a very linear perspective model and then learning to carve pieces out of it like this so that you can start building organic shapes and then you take away the framework as you go and then you say you can carve a hole in here right and then you can round this corner out like this and it will carve that whole back part off there we don't need it and we've got a little boot right like a piggy bank boot or something like that. So starting very structural and then carving pieces out of it is one good way to practice that, but also just building shapes. So here we're thinking about splashes. The inside is going to hit here. Those ripple rings are going to go out like this, and there's going to be some sort of path from one place to the next that all of your water goes. And you can form one of these like old 60s style jello molds that the white ladies used to make in the United States and put little chunks of food in there or something. But these types of forms are just gonna help you understand where the water's going in a splash without spending so much time on the detail. Because if you watch Onion Skin's thing, he started with something like this, like this really exciting, expressive, splash which is really fun to do but it's just like i say with character animation you don't start with a dragon and in effects animation you do not start with a big elaborate splash with hundreds of holes and drips and water so what do you do what's the bouncing ball equivalent of water well it is just these shapes and then you can start animating let me just hide that mess Make sure you had a base so you take one of these forms and then you practice animating just a sheet of paper folding over one of the forms. I do not have the guide that I use to draw this, which I think is an actual tragedy. Here we've got the outside. So at some point I had an actual guide here and I was just drawing the sheet, sheet of paper going along the surface of your guide. So this is just a good way to practice moving things in perspective along these curved paths. Now in an actual splash, we have one down here, the inner ring and the outer ring actually continue to expand as you're animating them. Why does that start so tiny? So if you watch this inner ring, it's expanding and then the pieces break up and the outer ring is also expanding. This is also as opposed to an over the top splash this is a bowl that then falls down so there's lots of different ways you can do it but when you're starting this is a good method is to just practice animating your piece of paper along the track okay next you start adding a little bit of detail so let me hide this nonsense all right so we'll take the the animation off of them and you take your sheet of paper and then you give it little watery shapes like that. So this one is quite detailed. You can stay as simple as you want. You don't need to go nearly into this much detail at all when you're starting, and I would discourage you from doing so. But this is the best way to just start getting those things in your mind, being able to track these shapes as they're going along that curve. So then, let me move these back out of the way. You clean that up. 
All right, so here's the two of them side by side. This one's got just a little bit of a more rough. And you can do as many cleanup passes as you want. If there's a stage between here and here that's even rougher, does not matter. Clean it up as many times as you need to to really nail this stuff down. Okay, so here you can see the rough versus the clean. And along with that, I'm not, I, I did break these little points up into even smaller points. Again, completely unnecessary. Keep it simpler than this if you want to. And then the next version, I start adding drips coming off of that. So some are going a little bit faster, some are following along behind. And I also did that secondary water wake, like the part that looks like foam and the part that looks like water. I did that in a separate pass. So you can do as many layers of detail as you want over top. You don't need to start here. That's really the, the moral of this story is do not start here. Start as back as far as you need to go. At this point, I usually start something closer to this, but if you're starting out, start out with as simple as you need to to get that working before you even worry about detail, okay? Then I'm thinking about surface impact. So here in this one, there's no surface impact at all. It just hits, it's a line. And then I'm going to hide that with a layer over the top, which we will can see better in the drawing view. Okay, so I've done it on the drawing overlay of just a little bit of impact and it's very small, all right? So here's what we were working with before. I added this over the top of it to hide that seam. And then below it, I have some just surface ripples. Very, very simple, just thick to thin surface ripples. And I believe I put those on the color art. Oh, the color art has a back impact. Okay, so where the thing hits in the back. That stuff's happening. Again, you can hide any of those flat seams with a little bit of foam or something. And then in the underlay layer which is where we have these. You can have those on a separate layer entirely if you want to. And I recommend it, especially if you're new, to keep things as many layers as you need to keep them under control. And then we color them. So the colors aren't the best because I wanted them to be fairly visible. But you can see that all that work brings you to the place where you have a fancy finished splash. So you can see the foam layers separate. And I've also uh, cleaned everything up in the line, the line tool, because in television, cleaning up the line tool, it's in Toon Boom, using the line tool sucks so much for cleanup and that closed gaps is terrible. I don't, it's terrible. Sorry, Toon Boom. You have, you have something like this and you try and close gaps it and it will, give you stuff like this where your corners don't fill this. So you end up cleaning up like this and it's terrible. I do not like it. But the huge advantage of this is you can change the line size after. So if they decide they want it thinner or thicker or the scene calls for it being thinner or thicker, you can just go into your tool properties. You can just scale all your lines up very easily to an obnoxious amount. So you can make it thicker and thinner. So line is super valuable, especially on something like a splash that you're gonna be using all the time over and over again to have the control of being able to thicken and thin those lines is very valuable, even though it's just not fun to do. A lot of this is not fun. Okay, so here is the progression I would suggest for anybody that's trying to learn splashes. And if you hang out in category one for a few weeks and you just practice drawing those shapes and drawing on the surface of those forms, that's wonderful. Spend as long as you need on each stage. Keep this very, very simple. I use this for studio demonstrations when I'm teaching new baby animators at the studio. So it has to be a little bit more towards like a show ready piece. But if you're doing something for yourself, you're just learning, keep it very, very simple. You do not need to get into this level of detail until you're in a position where that's something necessary. Like if you're working on a very high detail show, then you're gonna have to get to the stage. But when you're learning, you do not need to do that. And I did a quarter splash. I don't even think I mentioned that. I just did a half of the splash because the full splash is the same thing. Like if you're practicing, there's no reason to do the whole splash. If you just do this much, you're going to learn the same things as if you did the whole splash, but it will take you significantly less time. Okay, so just do this much splash, half a splash, a uh, quarter splash. Think about doing, um, a bowl splash instead, so the water comes up in a bowl shape. 
how do you draw on the surface of a bowl like this, right? So that's how you're going to get this rough down here, wherever that's gone. There. Obviously, this never got finished because I don't know what it was for. But you can see that this one is a little bit different where everything's expanding. This would be like the next step where your inner ring and outer ring is expanding. You're expanding this shape as you're animating the other things at the same time. And that's how you're going to get that expansion. And But everything in there, all this detail is just expanding rings. These like obnoxious surface details that I love to do, they're just expanding rings and expanding circles. And the little drips, they're just bouncing balls. All right, so that's it. Sort of quick. Give it a try. Do a quarter splash or a half splash, one eighth of a splash, and you're going to get the same practice in that doing a full one is. And you can do 10 of them in the time where it would take you to do three if you did the whole thing. You can do much more practice, and more practice has value. Just doing it more times is going to teach you more than spending 800 hours on one perfect splash. Just slap it down, make it rough. You don't need to try and get past these first few stages if you don't need it for something. If you're just learning, it can be scratchy and sketchy and ugly and valuable and good. As long as you learn something.